morning, everyone. So glad you joined us for another week of worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is a day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and give Him glory. Paul said to the Philippian church, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. So I want you to get up from off your seat, lift your hands to the Lord, and let's begin to worship Him because our God is a mighty God. The Word of God says that His arm is not too short that He cannot save. His ear is not too dull that He cannot hear your prayer today. He is going to hear your prayer. Present it to Him by faith and wait for Him to answer all that you need. You can find in Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 What a wonderful day to be here the Lord. Now I just let you know that we have communion today. Let's get all your communion elements ready. And we welcome you in the house of the Lord today. Come and experience the presence of God. Amen. Father, we just thank you that we come before your throne today. We surrender ourselves unto you, Holy Spirit, and direct us as have ears that can hear what you tell us. Let us follow the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is the good shepherd. We thank you, Father, that you are such a wonderful God that we have. We call you daddy. Let us be directed by you. In the time of living, and let us uplift the name of Jesus, that all people will come into relation with Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blessings of each and everyone that hears and watches the service. Let every home be filled with your goodness, with your love, with your presence. For we ask and declare it over the lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's worship the Lord this morning.
healing. Receive your provision right now as you eat this bread. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus took the cup on that night before he was to go and lay down his life. He left something for us to remember that moment, to remember for the rest of our lives as often as we do it, and we do it daily in our home. You can do it daily. You can remember Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection every day. Have it fresh and new before you. Let's lift the cup. And he did this. He lifted the cup and he blessed it. This is a cup of blessing. He lifted up with his disciples and he blessed it. And they said, this is a new covenant that I give unto you. The old is gone. He's given us a new covenant to remember him by. So he says, drink this for your forgiveness of your sins, for transgressions, iniquities. All that we need is found in the blood of Jesus. He shed his blood. He shed every ounce of his blood so we can have forgiveness. He laid down his life for us. Let's remember that fresh. Let's thank you for that. Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for your blood. Thank you that you shed your blood so we can have life. Thank you, Lord, as we take this in us, we're receiving your life in us. We're receiving new life in us, Lord. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you, Lord, that we have access to you. We have access, direct access from here to glory. You were the bridge that broke that great divide between us and the Father. You came to lay down your life so we can have life forevermore. For that, we thank you. Lord, as we receive this in our body, thank you that it will be a blessing to everyone receiving it together with us today. In the name of Jesus, let's receive it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so great. He's the great God. Let's worship him. Saying, prepare. I want to encourage you today. I want to challenge you today. 
prepare for what's coming. God's glory supernatural outpouring will come on this earth and he wants us to repair. That's why we go through the season we go through right now. It says uh, prepare provision for yourself or within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go into the to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. He did not look like they could cross over the Jordan. The Jordan was at the flood stage. It, it, it was maximized, the river was maximized to the outer brim. But with God, all things are possible. So number two, number one was not everybody will be crossing over, but you can, amen. But you maybe won't because if you don't change your mind, if you don't change our attitude, if you change our behavior, if you don't change our future, we will not be crossing over. Because the Bible says we need to have the oil in our bodies. The oil, the land, the oil, the oil that will light our bodies. Hallelujah. That's the power of the Holy Spirit within you. Number two, we can step, stepping over, uh, stepping up into new life. Amen. We stepping into new life. Hallelujah. A life we have never known could happen to us. A life we have never known existed. Hallelujah. Because God is preparing His church to step into new life of Holy Ghost power, the supernatural being released through our bodies to impact this world like we have never seen before. But before there's a harvest, there's a shaking. The shaking sets up the harvest. Let me repeat this again. Before there's a harvest, there's a shaking. We are in a time of shaking. God is shaking the church today. God is bringing judgment to the church first. And so we can come before God and say, God, I'm so sorry for what I've done. I'm so sorry for what I've not done. But from this day forward, I will serve you. Because you are shaking this world. Because the harvest is coming in. That's why we need to step into a new life. Hallelujah. In 2 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord search throughout the earth to strengthen those whose heart are fully committed to Him. The eyes of the Lord are searching throughout the earth to look for who is ready, who is willing. Not everybody will be ready. Not everybody will be willing. Will be, willing, but you can be willing and you can be ready for what's coming. God wants to use you to escalate, to promote the kingdom of God in its level. Hallelujah. God is looking for people to demonstrate His power through them. God is looking for a vessel where He can pour His glory, where He can pour His anointing into the person's life. To experience God's power, we must be continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, we depend on the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to saturate ourselves with His presence. We need to come before God and say, God, I'm open. Fill me afresh. Fill me with your anointing. Fill me with your glory. Fill me with your power. Hallelujah. Because God is preparing His church to do the in, 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 impossible, to become possible. It also says in 1 Chronicles 16, verse, 8, uh, verse 11, it says, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face forevermore. But I want to tell you today, God wants you to step into a new life that you have never had before. Because in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, 19 says, The Spirit of God is on me. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is on you. The Spirit of God has anointed you to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to the broken heart to proclaim the captive and it will be released. Oh, He has anointed you to bring the good news to the poor. You are the source. You are the vessel God wants to use to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me. It says, say, God has anointed me. God has sent me. He has anointed you. He has sent you to proclaim the captives will be released. That the blind will see. That the oppressed will be set free. And that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Amen. The Lord's favor has come. But God wants to pour His Spirit into your life. He wants to anoint you. He wants to direct you. He wants to draw from a natural and a super natural. He wants you to have an understanding that nothing matters in life more but the Father's business. He wants you to understand that nothing matters more in life but to fulfill God's purpose that He has given into your life before you ever came to this world. And so God has anointed you to bring the good news to the poor. Because what is the good news for if you keep in our hearts? What is the good news for if you can't demonstrate God's glory? What is the good news for if you can't demonstrate God's love? But today He has come into your life to demonstrate it is good news in all the world that the world will be known to that the world will be 
known to the good news that the good news will be received by the multitudes of people. Hallelujah. Glory to Lord God Almighty. He has anointed you. Understand when God's anoints, He releases His glory. He releases power. He releases the overflow in your life. And so that's why we need to come and say, God, here I am. Wherever you lead me, I will follow. Wherever you take me, I will follow, Lord. Nothing matters more in life but you, Lord God Almighty. Nothing matters more in my life but to shine for Jesus Christ. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. You have the power to open the blind eyes. You have the power to make the criminal walk. You have the blind eyes to the, 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 the deaf to hear again. The dumb to speak again. God has empowered us. Hallelujah. Let's step up into the church where God wants us to become. Let's step up into the church where God wants us to be. Because it says in verse 19, the time of the Lord's favor has come. The time of the Lord's favor is here. Hallelujah. He wants to take his church in the next step. Number three, he wants to escalate us into the glory of God. We have entered a season that we have never seen before in the history of this world. I'm not talking about the coronavirus, no. That the demonic spirit is defeated. I'm talking about the supernatural of God being released upon this church. He's escalating his church in the supernatural. Escalating means to become more intense. More, more serious. More intense for God. More serious for God. It means intensifying or increase quickly. Increase rapidly. We have a window. We have a window of opportunity. Then if we take that window of opportunity, we're going to populate heaven and keep people out of hell. But it depends on you. It depends on us. Hallelujah. We need for our individual life to continually, continually fall short. We need Him for our individual lives because He continually falls short of His glory. We need God to see our families and churches and nations transformed by hell to die. He's all powerful. Hallelujah. He's everlasting. He is the authority. Many of us know God as Father. We know to care for us, to direct us, to discipline us. We know Him as our shepherd who meets our need and guides us to life. But very few know Him as the Almighty God. Hallelujah. And very few know Him as the Almighty God. God Almighty. Hallelujah. The God who strength and power. God, the God who strength and power do accomplish the impossible. God is the strength and the power to accomplish the impossible. You and I cannot accomplish the impossible on our own. We cannot do much in our flesh. But when we lean on God, we can do all things. Very few people know El Shaddai. What is done, how he delivered Israel from the slavery of Egypt. How he split the red sea open. How he turned the water into wine. How he raised the dead. How he healed the blind. And they wonder why they never experienced the miraculous in their own life. Because we need to focus our focus on God the Almighty. They all shall die. The glory, the power, the presence, the authority. Hallelujah. Christ said that those who believe in him would do greater miracles than these. In John 14, 12. They would do greater miracles than they would then. His raising from the dead, His healing of the blind, His small bag of bread. He has anointed you and appointed you to step up to escalate into the glory of God. He wants His church to escalate in the glory of His presence. He wants His church to walk in the glory. He wants His church to experience the glory. He wants His church to understand that He is El Shaddai. Hallelujah. He's the power and the authority there is. It reminds me of Peter in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 41. Peter spoke of the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit, and 3,000 people came to know Christ. Hallelujah. 
Christ's ministry was largely limited to Israel. But the disciples reached beyond the waters and turned the world upside down. Today is a time where we need to turn the world upside down for the kingdom of God, for God's glory. Hallelujah. In Acts 17, verse 6, we see, we see how he how to turn the world upside down, and the world was never the same. Let us finish God's purpose and God's will on earth. Well, as we come to the end of time, like we know, with the shock, with the praise, and with turning the world upside down for his kingdom purpose. God revealed to Abraham in Genesis 17, 1. As El Jedi, God Almighty, the God for whom nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for him to do for you. If you're crossing over from the normal into the supernatural, If you're stepping into a new life of the supernatural, it will escalate you into the glory of God. Your life will never be the same. You will look at life differently. Life will unfold differently. Everything will change. We need to know God is El Jedi. Paul says in Philippians 3, 10, 3, 10, he said, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Do you know today the power of his resurrection? Hallelujah. Nothing can stop the power of the resurrection. And try to seal the tomb. They try to lock the rock on the wall. But it's power in you. Hallelujah. Release the power for God's glory. Oh, the Lord told me last year so many people bought the glory of God within their life, never release it. What do you have in your life? People need, people want, people will cry out for. Because in relation with Christ, and he goes on and says, in the fellowship of sharing the suffering, becoming like him in his death, nothing matters. We are sealed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, we are in for the long run. We are in to serve Christ until the last breath of our body leaves our body. Amen. Because we didn't come to live our own life. We didn't come to fulfill our own purpose. No, we came with a purpose and we shall fulfill that purpose that God has placed in our lives. Let me talk to you today about my God, Yahweh. He is the I am. He says, I am who I am. You cannot describe God. He's everlasting. His name is ever present. He's the ever present, all knowing, all powerful God there is. There's only one God, God Jehovah. Hallelujah. And he wants to have a relationship with everyone on earth. He penetrates every nation of this world. Oh, the nation needs to turn to the Lord. He wants a relationship with every individual. With all the seven plus billion people on earth, he wants to have a relationship. He is the ever present. No matter where you are today, no matter what you're going through today, in the ever present God, He's with you. Even if you don't know Him, He's with you. He's the all knowing. He knows where you're coming from, where you're going to. Don't focus on where you're coming and where you're going to. As much you need to focus on your relationship with Jesus. His all powerful Father. All you need in life is the one Father called God, Jehovah. He's a God that reaches out to you. 
<laughs> wraps his arms around you and says, you're mine, I love you. Don't focus on life, focus on him. Don't focus on situations, focus on Jesus. Turn your eyes towards Jesus, hallelujah. Turn your eyes on Jesus and everything else on earth will grow strange with them. He's the everlasting God, Elohim. He's without beginning or an end. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. There's nothing, nothing that describes our Heavenly Father. No words can describe God. He's there from the beginning. He loves you today. He cares for you. He's Jehovah Sabbath. He's the divine warrior. The battle is never yours. The battle is the Lord's. He cannot be defeated throughout the word, throughout the word of God and try to defeat God. And they try to defeat Jesus. But nobody could ever defeat him. Hallelujah. Nobody could ever interfere with him. So don't fight the battle, let him fight the battle for you. He's Jehovah Chira. In the famine, he still provides. You will not be able to explain how he provides. Because you don't know, we don't know how he provides. Because the way he provides is supernatural. He's the God, Jehovah Jireh. He's the source of all your physical, spiritual, and emotional needs. Jesus came to this world to become what you need. He became a restorer to life. He, he, came, he came to for us to have eternal life. And all we need is just to accept him. He's Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha. Oh, it's Jehovah Rapha. The Lord our healer. He can pray, you can praise him for healing your seeds. He is the healer. Hallelujah. Oh, he's the healer. He heals you today. Whatever you go through, you may lay on a bed. Oh, whatever it is. Whatever it is, he is the healer. He heals all diseases, praise God. He is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. He goes before you as a symbol of strength and power. He is your victory, hallelujah. He is everything that you need and more. So today, if you want to receive the wonderful, wonderful Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, oh, He has a wonderful plan for your life. He knows where you're going to. But he wants you to understand that his perfect will for your life is to be with him one day for the more in glory. And so, if you want to receive that gift that God has for you today, it's a free gift. He loves you so much. And his plan for you is wonderful. And I want to ask you a question. If you should die this very second, do you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you're going to go to be with the Lord? Do you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you're going to heaven? That's a very serious question, a very important question. You may say, well, I'm a good person. I don't harm anybody. That's not good enough. The Bible says for all have fallen short of the glory of God. For we all have sinned. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No one. No one is righteous besides Jesus. We all have fallen short because of our sins. And we have to notice the wage of sin is death. But today God has a gift for you. He has a free gift for you. Because the Bible says, whoever calls the name of the Lord Jesus Christ 
shall be saved. Hell and hallelujah. And you are whosoever, of course, you are your arm. So, if you want to receive the free gift, I will lead you into a prayer. And all you do is just pray the prayer after me. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Thank you for your precious Son, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you washed our sins at the cross. And today I want to come to you, Lord Jesus, and ask you to wash my sins. Purify me, cleanse me. I know I'm a sinner, and I know I need forgiveness, and I know I need you, Lord Jesus. But today I surrender my life unto you. I no longer live my life on my own. I no longer want to be the Lord of my life. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you, Lord Jesus, to direct me into the glorious ways yet before me. And I thank you that I can ask you to cleanse me, purify me of everything that causes me to not follow you. Every sin, every mistake I make, Lord, thank you that you cleanse me today. And I thank you that I know that I'm a born again believer from this day forward. Washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Renewed and made whole in you, Lord Jesus. And I pray that you will give me boldness to speak for you. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Advance me in my walk with you. And I thank you because I'm waiting for you one day to come back soon for me. And I thank you that I can pray all this prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in your name we pray. Amen. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I tell you today that your sins are forgiven. Welcome, brother. Welcome, sister, into the family of God. I rejoice with you that you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. Now I want to, we want to get in touch with you. And so we would love for you to send us an email at info at ewocnj.org info at ewocnj.org because we want to reach out to you
the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, Father.